So this guy Muhammad walks into the Boynton Beach police station and he says, I know a woman who's trying to hire a hitman to kill her husband. She has to find someone who can kill her husband for her. The man, Muhammad Shahadi, was recorded as he talked to detectives about his one-time lover, Dahlia DiPolito. He tells police he's speaking out to save the man's life. Are you scared for the guy? Yes, because she's really, I mean, dead serious on getting this done. It's quite a story, if true, because while he can describe Dahlia... She's maybe 5'6", five, 5'7", five, uh, dark, black hair. She's a good-looking girl, really good-looking girl, actually. He can't even tell cops her last name or her address. Well, at the time, we didn't know what to believe. We were kind of, you know, weren't sure what we had. They had the reservations. They had to say, let's see some proof. To get proof, the cops make Muhammad a confidential informant. He arranges to meet Dahlia at this gas station. Cops are staked out as their mystery woman arrives. And she actually stepped out of the car. We were surprised because she didn't look like the type. She didn't look like a killer, but Detective Alex Moreno says she's about to show her true colors. She gets into Muhammad's silver Lexus. While you can't quite see them on the hidden camera cops had installed, you can sure hear them talking about a hitman. This guy's a professional. It's not bull once she gets in the car and she meets up with the informant, we realized that this guy was credible. His mom is not going to be suspicious of you or anything like Why that. Why me? Like, do you know what the f telling somebody that. yet? Nobody's going to be able to point a finger at me. She's just talking about it like she's ordering lunch. Randy Schultz is a columnist for the Sun Sentinel newspaper. You think, this is just so cold, not really acting like the typical newlywed, shall we say. <laughs> Muhammad tells Dahlia the hitman wants $1,200 to buy a gun. She comes prepared. She has a wad of cash in her bag and counts it out and hands it over. And shortly afterward, gives him a photo of Mike. Wipe my on top the pictures. Really? You're going to give him something uh. Fingerprints all over. And at that moment, the detectives realize, ah, we've got her. This is real. She just handed him $1,200 in a picture of the husband that she wants murdered. We were shocked how easily she talked about killing her, getting her husband killed. Hey, human family, how are you? It's Darren. Welcome to another episode of Fully Alive Again. I have an excellent show for you guys today. And for those of you new to the channel, I just want to say welcome to the channel. Here at Fully Alive Again, we learn all that we can to do all that we can to go up, over, around, or through a narcissist and narcissism. There is no fluff here. I keep it directly on the people you need to be concerned with. So many people, in fact, this is what today's show is about, so many people overemphasize personality traits has narcissism. There are people that even say ambition is narcissism. Strength, confidence, charismatic energy is, is narcissism. This is utter ridiculous. You can find narcissist in every personality type on earth. To try to categorize it is trying to hide the reality of the predecidic people that surround us. All narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths, people who have no empathy are the same. It is life circumstances and experiences that make them behave like a psychopath, a sociopath, are what we call a pathological narcissist. They are all the same rolled up into one. They are all capable of doing the same thing. Anybody that tells you any difference than that is either ignorant or being deceptive. You don't need to worry about personality differences and traits. We all have different personalities. We all operate differently. What we want to know is where is the evil predecidic people? Today's psychology that has been, in my opinion, feminized over the last 30 years will even tell you that masculine energy is narcissism. It's toxic. This overemphasis of diagnosis of people in society with all these mental illnesses, just like the drug administration, it's all BS. People are either evil, 
and parasitic. And you can take away the evil if that frightens you, but it's still what they are. They're either evil and parasitic, wanting to prey on other human beings and or animals to hurt them to find joy and pleasure. This is very real. That should be your focus on how to spot them. If you're looking at personality traits solely and thinking that this type of personality means narcissists, you've been bamboozled, you've been tricked, and probably by a person with ill intent. So, let's do what we do and dive deep. No tears, no fears, fully alive again after these years. Palm Beach, Florida. Mansions face the shoreline. Pricey jewels fill the store windows. Bentleys dot the boulevards. But just down the road, the bling disappears as if a wave swept it away. If Palm Beach is high-end uh, top chef, Boynton Beach is meatloaf. A tropical blend of strip malls, side by side with palm trees, retirees, and young folks just starting out. It's home to petite, soft-spoken Dahlia DiPolito. I just want to chime in and bring attention to her personality type. Soft-spoken and petite. Just remember that. Young folks just starting out. It's home to petite, soft-spoken Dahlia DiPolito. She is Boynton Beach's most unlikely and notorious celebrity. I didn't do anything. The wrong kind. Miss DiPolito? Is your husband Michael? Her road to infamy began with this video. It looks like police telling Dahlia her husband of just six months was murdered. Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, man, he's been killed. <laughs> but watch closely, because nothing in this case is what it seems. Try to calm down. Turns out police are duping Dahlia. That whole crime scene? It's fake. Police claim Dahlia ordered a hit on her husband and that they have hidden camera video to prove it. Nobody's gonna be able to point a finger at me. First comes love, then comes marriage, then murder. This story was on newscasts everywhere. Dahlia DiPolito, she is the Boynton Beach newlywed. Caught on tape, taking a contract out on her husband. The hitman turned out to be an undercover cop. Police staged a fake murder scene. For six years, hounded by the press, but never saying a word until now now according to the pseudo psychologist activist psychologist of today that are trying to emasculate men because she's petite polite soft-spoken and agreeable she ain't never done nothing to nobody she just been floating around shitting rainbows unicorns and butterflies that's all she do. She ain't never hurt nobody ever. Walking on the sidewalk right now, this doesn't happen very often. No, this, this doesn't happen at all. This is the first time I've had a walk in a, a long time. Yeah, your every move is monitored. She's under house arrest, accused of solicitation to commit murder, tethered to an ankle bracelet. That's what it looks like. And it doesn't come off at all. She says she's on medication for what is unsurprising, depression and anxiety and that faith is what gets her through each day. Did you notice the double victim shield that she put up? I'm on depression medication. I'm depressed. And I'm faithful. I'm a real follower of God. I'm not evil. Look at me. Look at my shields. Depression, pharmaceutical drugs. and that faith is what gets her through each day. Her favorite escape? Listening to worship music. Her favorite band? Hillsong. 
all those, uh, the songs are just about uh, people going through struggles. I feel like I'm, you know, casting away the negativity and just really bringing in light. What's been the hardest part? Not knowing when it's over, um, not being able to leave, watching everybody around me being able to come and go as they want, and I can't, I can't do that, and just trying to be happy for them as they're in. They're coming back and forth and stuff. Her downfall began, she says, the day she met what she thought was her dream man. What was your initial impression of Mike DiPolito? Charming. He was a workout fanatic and self-employed marketer and more than a decade older. But no matter, they had instant chemistry. What drew you to him? He was really, really engaging and I felt a really strong connection. We seemed to hit it off really quick. What do you think Michael saw in you? My personality. I guess we were active sexually. You know, that seemed to be on point. There it is, gentlemen. The little head doing the thinking instead of the big head. A fast relationship because it was fireworks in the bedroom. How many times are we going to see this? Young men, please learn from our mistakes as men. Do not engage in a relationship over sexual attraction. And if the relationship is moving quickly, immediately slam on the brakes. I don't care how good looking they are. I don't care how much fireworks are happening in the bedroom. I don't care if she's 100% fire. You've got to slow it down and take control. We are talking about everything in your life. And do not misconstrue that narcissists come in a certain package. This is the pseudo psychologists out there. They come in every personality temperament that you can imagine. So please, dick discipline. <clears throat> Excuse me. And ladies, this goes across the board with you too. Same thing. Fireworks in the bedroom. Relationships moving fast. You're walking into a mess. We have to be mature about our lives and letting sexual energy and attractive people dictate our boundaries and putting our guards down is one of the most foolish things that you can do out here in the dating arena or allowing people into your life as friends or lovers. Well, there was that. And of course, Mike had a Porsche, seemed to have plenty of money and a nice new condo in this complex, Renaissance Commons. What better setup to start a new life? I would say I was naive in that I just never imagined something out as crazy as what happened would happen. You know, you would never see that coming. Indeed, who would have imagined that the Dipolitos would be a duo on the tip of so many tongues? Dahlia Dipolito. Dipolito. Dahlia Dipolito. When people hear the name Dahlia Dipolito, what do you think comes to mind? Everything negative. All the headlines, the person they're describing, it, it's definitely not me. People when Dahlia sat little down little with us for her first television interview, oh, she wanted to talk about a very better. different Dahlia. A girl with a normal upbringing who danced, played sports. I had a really great childhood, happy, had a lot of friends. She went to Catholic high school, then on to college, and soon after got a real estate license. A career choice as natural in South Florida as sunscreen at the beach for someone with a personality like she describes. I, I didn't have a hard time getting along with people. Shirley didn't have trouble getting along with Mike. The two lovebirds were so happy dating, it was only a small issue that he was, well, married to someone else. I was told that he was going through the divorce proceedings. Would you have had a problem had that not been the case if he just was a married guy who was looking for Absolutely. some fun on the side? Yes. Mike had a past, but he says so did Dahlia. Mike says Dahlia wasn't just selling real estate, she was selling herself as an escort. Well, I didn't meet her in church, that's obvious. Uh, needless to say, you know, I, I was married, I made a bad decision. I, I called her an escort, and she came. Now I know what all you ladies are thinking. He's a swell guy. <laughs> He's by no means a swell guy. 
He was a bad person, a bad boy, a bad man, whatever you want to call it. And he acknowledges that. Having an escort while you're married is pretty bad. But the difference between bad and evil, number one, is that he knows what he did is wrong and he's not trying to project under her what he did. He took ownership. She, on the other hand, her whole defense was that he made her a bad person and connived her into doing things that she didn't want to do. For instance, like being an escort when he first met her. Did you see? Now remember, she's petite. She's soft-spoken. She's agreeable. She has depression. She's a girl of faith. But she was an escort when he met her. Now, talk about lack of dick discipline, too. Who in God's name would put their name on an escort? This is how feminized and how immature some of us men have become. I don't care how good the panannies are. I don't care if it's absolutely perfection, which in my opinion, eh, eh, she wasn't. But even if she was to him, or to whomever, you would never trust an escort or put your last name on her. So a lot of this is self-inflicted. It still doesn't justify what this horrible, and I mean horrible, Okay, so it may not have been word, exactly a fairy tale romance, did. but Mike says he fell for her regardless. And just a few months later, he got divorced and they wasted no time. Five days later, they were married. Why rush into the marriage? Why say, okay, your divorce is final. Let's run to the courthouse and get married. It clearly wasn't well thought out. You see how she just laughs over a profoundly serious question? Do you know why? Because she got married to do evil things. She was looking for a huckleberry, a gullible man to sink her teeth into. She was looking for someone to torture emotionally, psychologically. She was looking for someone to unleash hell on. That's what she was doing. That's why they rush into it. And that's why they don't think it through. But they really have thought it through and they're executing what I believe is their agenda and responsibility as a Luciferian agent But of from chaos. all appearances, it was working out. This By day, the newlyweds exchanging love notes. We weren't like the party type or anything like that. And so I liked the homey type of, you know, environment. Their nights, Dahlia says, often spent snuggling at home watching reality TV. Shows like Cheaters and Real Housewives of New York. Hey, Calm no, down. no, no, it's not right. Are you gonna fight with me now? Did right. Mike love it? Did you love it? Did you love it together? He liked the fact that people would be on these shows and essentially get paid to do nothing. It's just watching them at home or on their couch. Back then, it was all innocent fun, she says. Two people just dreaming together of being on TV. He said, you know, if they, if they could do it, if, if you're watching these people do it, there's no reason why, you know, we can't do it. We look better than those people and why not? But Dahlia says there was a darker side to Mike, something he was hiding, something big. After months of being together, his probation officer showed up at our home and I had no idea who it was. When he told me, he just completely downplayed everything. She says Mike failed to mention he was a convicted felon. Years ago, he'd been to prison for fraud after scamming investors out of tens of thousands of dollars. Probation until 2032. Right, and that was something else that I didn't know either. I wouldn't have dated him if I would have known. That's just silly. That's a lie. She's lying. Mike says he was trying to live a very clean life to be sure he didn't violate his parole, which is why he got worried a couple of months into the marriage when strange things start happening. Now, here's why... I believe he's telling the truth that she's lying about not knowing about his parole. Number one, when they met, she was an escort. 
You're not going to hide too much when you're dealing with an escort lying in bed and you're talking about things. You're going to feel free to talk about your probation. Number two, nobody wants to go back to jail that has any ounce of sense and hasn't been institutionalized. So he told her, I don't want to go to the clubs. I don't want to go out drinking. Let's stay home. And he was making her a homebody. He would be very aware of what could get him in trouble. You bet your last dollar. Seven they years, had a I guess, prior, about that. I had no run ins with no the police. Surprise I meet there. Dahlia, and then within six months, I'm probably pulled over, had my house searched, and uh, grabbed at every other area in Palm Beach probably eight times. The cops say there's a reason they keep pulling him over. They are getting anonymous tips that he's dealing drugs. And I'm like, well, how's this happening? Strange things going on in his life and in Dahlia's too. Police say... Now, you see, I always say <clears throat> a narcissist has ill intent in nefarious plans and methodologies for your ass before you even consummate a relationship. This is how evil and demented these people are. See, some of you may think, well, she just wanted his money and his Porsche and this and that. No, that's icing on the cake. She would rather destroy him and have all of those things go down the drain and move on to the next victim than to do it correctly and have the spoils of her evil, nefarious deeds. These people feed on pain and suffering. If that's not evil, we just need to get rid of the word. And it's not black and white. Life is very simple. Good, bad, evil. What, what's, why can't we accept that? Because narcissists run the world of psychology. When, when a new category <clears throat> is added to the DSM, who does that? What room are these people meeting in? And what lenses are they looking out at the world? And we just buy into it happily because she's the best psychologist in the world. There's no way he or she could be a narcissist. Oh my God. And that's how they get us every single time. That's how they run the world. That's how they prevent you from reaching your top potential, being as powerful and capable and having the inner peace that you deserve. This is how they do it in every industry, in every aspect of human existence, from religion to psychology to the academia world, you name it. And it's because of one thing, we trust nice people. We trust people who we like. This is why narcissists study shows like this online so they can know exactly how to present themselves to you. And it's how show hosts who are narcissists online prepare you, <laughs> prepare After you just to six be months victimized of marriage, she has other men in her knowing. life, men who are helping this her with a secret plan in. to get Mike's money, his condo, and get him out of the way. And that one of those men is in the front seat of this car. In your life straight after this, seriously, don't ever do this you know? And they're not talking about the weather. Killing somebody, come on. I mean, that's, you know, nobody's gonna be able to point a finger. Now, does it sound like she knows what she's doing? When she stated, come on, no one's gonna be able to point a finger at me. Narcissists know what they're doing. They also know how they are protected and how they are camouflaged and how you and I and the rest of the sentient human beings fall for their bullshit over and over again. I hear experts in the field that are considered to be the best of the best say, narcissists don't really know who they are or what they are. It's really complicated. It's really sad when the ones that don't know what they are 
are narcissists. Are you kidding me, people? Do you know who you are? They know who they are. They know when they're doing bad things to other people and their nefarious tactics. They know the things that happened to you were not an accident. And if you're with a nice one right now, they have a target on somebody. They're messing with somebody's life. No matter how nice, educated, congenial they seem, they have a target. And they're trying to cause harm to somebody as we speak. This is what they do. And the sooner you accept that, that not only these people exist, but you were laying next to one of them or in a friendship with one of them or raised with one of them and you accept that they're evil, going no contact if you can and setting and maintaining, and maintaining solid boundaries becomes very easy. It's only when you're in denial and you're falling for the pseudo psychology that's all over the place that talks about it like it's different personalities he's this way she's that way it's just personality disorders no it's not no it's not are there different personalities are some people more agreeable some people less agreeable some people more aggressive some people less aggressive some people more moody some people less moody of course but that has nothing to do with this. That's the smoke screen. All of these categories to get you off of the Next, attention. Next, honeymoon is over. I was a little surprised. It wasn't like, us. you know, kill them nicely. It wasn't even like, do it nice, don't hurt them. Or... Dahlia's alleged scheming is about to become a video sensation. It's a lot tougher than what I love. I know you're like, oh, what a cute little girl, whatever. <laughs> but I'm not. I could just watch the video over and over. It just is one of those clips that never gets old. The Boynton Beach Police Department, a small building in a quiet South Florida town. But what came out of here could hardly have been any bigger or louder. Terry Parker, investigative reporter for WPBF 25 News, covered the story. So this guy, Muhammad, walks into the Boynton Beach Police Station and he says, I know a woman who's trying to hire a hitman to kill her husband. She has to find someone who can kill her husband for her. The man, Muhammad Shahadi, was recorded as he talked to detectives about his one-time lover, Dahlia DiPolito. He tells police he's speaking out to save the man's life. Are you scared for the guy? Yes, because she's really, I mean, dead serious on getting this done. It's quite a story, if true, because while he can describe Dahlia... She's maybe 5'6", five, 5'7", five, uh, dark, black hair. She's a good-looking girl. Really good-looking girl, actually. He can't even tell cops her last name or her address. Well, at the time, we didn't know what to believe. We were kind of, you know, weren't sure what we had. They had the reservations. They had to say, let's see some proof. To get proof, the cops make Muhammad a confidential informant. He arranges to meet Dahlia at this gas station. Cops are staked out as their mystery woman arrives. And she actually stepped out of the car. We were surprised because she didn't look like the type. She didn't look like a killer, but Detective Alex Moreno says she's about to show her true colors. She gets into Muhammad's silver Lexus. While you can't quite see them on the hidden camera cops had installed, you can sure hear them talking about a hitman. This guy's a professional. It's not bull once she gets in the car and she meets up with the informant, we realize that this guy was credible. His mom is not gonna get suspicious of you or anything like Why that. Why me? Like, do you know what you telling somebody that? yet? Nobody's gonna be able to point a finger at me. She's just talking about it like she's ordering lunch. Randy Schultz is a columnist for the Sun Sentinel newspaper. You think, this is just so cold. Not really acting like the typical newlywed, shall we say. Do you see what I mean? This is a perfect example of when someone who lacks empathy goes to the next level. If you can't feel, you are evil. That's what evil is. Just because you don't act on it at the level that she did doesn't mean that you aren't what she is. Some just like to do it slowly. 
Some like to drive us insane. Some like to drive us to suicide. Some like to drive us to self-isolation and self-sabotage. But one thing that it all has in common, it's killing who you are. Some do it rapid. Some hire someone else to do it. But like the detective said, how could she be so cold? Because she is not all the way human. She's not a sentient human being. That's why I say we play patty cake with these guys too much. Personality traits and different personality types are irrelevant. Those are sentient human beings. Some of them are assholes. Some of them are aggressive. Some of them are pacifists. Some of them are conquerors. Some of them are ambitious. Some of them are lazy. Some of them are not. But they are not evil. And it is imperative that you differentiate between the two and to not listen to people who are telling you there is nothing Muhammad to tells Dahlia the hitman wants $1,200 to buy a gun. Disorder. She comes prepared. She has a wad of cash in her bag and counts it out and hands it over. And shortly afterward, gives him a photo of Mike. Wipe my on top the picture. Really? You're going to give him some uh, fingerprint all over? And at that moment, the detectives realize, ah, we've got her. This is real. She just handed him $1,200 in a picture of the husband that she wants murdered. We were shocked how easily she talked about killing her, getting her husband killed. Two days later, the talk turns to action in this CVS parking lot. She's not there to pick up a prescription. So I came here. I pretty much parked in this exact spot right here. This is Witty Jean, an undercover police officer. She parked one to the third uh, space uh, from here. Police say Dahlia thinks she is meeting an actual hitman in his cherry red convertible. We're staying in Paris. All right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He makes his plan crystal clear. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do it. I don't want to going to be done. A burglary gone wrong that leaves Mike dead. Everybody works in the daytime. Right. When he's at work, when he's not at work, then, you know, he gets two in the head. For the undercover detective, he really wants to nail Dahlia, make sure he's got it on tape and on camera that she is really going to pay him to kill her husband. And he says, are you sure, Dahlia? Between now and when it's done, you know, you're not going to have an option to change your mind, even if you change your mind. No, there's no, like, I'm, I'm determined already. I'm positive, do like, 5,000% okay. sure. There it is. The press would have a field day with this line. Listen again. She's 5,000% sure. I'm positive, like 5,000% oh. sure. Like, no, when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. No, she wasn't just 100% sure. She was 5,000% sure that she wanted her husband killed. I was a little shocked because I didn't think she was going to be uh, that open. Dahlia never backs off. No, I'm not going to, you know, I'm a lot tougher than what I look. I know you think, you know, like, oh, what a cute little girl, whatever. You know, but I'm not. You are. You're beautiful. Thank you, but, you know, it's... I just need to make sure everything's going to take care of. Now, what did she say? I'm not what you think I am by how I look. I'm a lot tougher. I can do this. I'm not. I'm not. I'm serious about doing this. I don't care, basically. She was basically saying, I'm a demon. I can kill at will like this. It doesn't bother me. Just do it. But again, you'll hear the pseudoscientists and the pseudopsychologists saying, well, sometimes narcissists know that they're narcissists and sometimes they don't. It's really complicated. It depends on if what type of narcissist... <laughs> It depends on what type of Marnik butterfly the narcissist is. Is it a dark triad butterfly or is it a Marnark butterfly? <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. It's just, this is just so black and white and so clear and so simple to see that all of this intellectual clutter we throw into these discussions really waste a lot of time and keep us romanticizing and in love with people we have no business loving, caring about, worrying about, or building a relationship with. They will just slay you and hurt you and bring darkness into your life. Why play around? Call it what it is.
It's sheer evil chaos and destruction. And they know it. They laugh and think we're silly, weak, sentient human beings because it's not very nice not to be agreeable or to call them out of their name. Don't be like they are. I'm not being like they are. I'm being human. That loves my life energy. That respects the essence of my life and other sentient human beings' lives too. I'm not a doormat. I'm not your plaything. This is my life. And if you come at me, I'm coming at you. I will defend my livelihood, my sanity, my privacy, my dignity. You stand up to a bully, even when they're evil and they're the boogeyman. We are children of God. God has given you the ability to face these monsters and to stand up against them if you stop buying into the things that weaken you, the information that weakens you. A not-so-cute little girl agrees to you a plan. To look at she life will leave the house is, early Wednesday morning. We Sure enough, she's at this gym around 6 a.m. Wednesday, leaving Mike DiPolito home alone, in bed, still recovering from liposuction from two weeks before. At this point, the police have all the evidence they need. These are, these are experienced officers. You know that you have enough. You have a case. Done. End of story. But not end of television show. <laughs> television show? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do when they come for you? That's right. Turns out a reality show has come to Boynton Beach. Got the video? Yep. And the timing couldn't be better. They'll be able to film the last part of the police investigation. Detectives, they were going to stage this fake crime scene. I hear a banging on the door. Sorry, yes. sorry to share with the police department. The TV show cameras are rolling when police wake up Mike. That's Officer Moreno at the door. Your wife has hired a person to kill you. Relax, just, just, just take, relax. take it easy. Take a deep breath. Ben, sit down. The guy was totally in shock that this was going on. I was very surprised. I was like, because oh. then it hit me like, this is, a, this is a mess. They drive him away and transform the street to make it appear they're really investigating Mike's murder. The TV show cops, along with Boynton Beach police, have cameras rolling when a detective calls Dahlia at the gym. We're at your residence, ma'am. Can you come right back to your residence, please? She's back in a flash, and now watch carefully. You be the judge of what happens next. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am, he's been killed. He's, he's been killed, ma'am. I'm sorry. Listen, try to calm down. We know the cops are acting. I can't let you see him, ma'am. What about Dahlia? I need you, I need you to take her to the station. I, amidst all of that tremors and shaking of her body, there wasn't any real tears coming out of her eyes. The crying, the, the screaming, the bending over Meryl Street, wherever you are tonight, don't worry, you're safe. They hustled Dahlia off to this interrogation room for questioning. Another recorded moment. Are you sure that you don't know anybody who want to kill your husband? You wouldn't want to kill my husband. Not at all. It's almost like something out of law and order. There's no more games with you and I. Now we're going to get down to serious business. I want to know if you know this guy. Come here. They bring in Officer Witty Jean, the supposed hitman from the car. Get over here. You know who this guy is? No. You've never seen him before? I've never seen him before. She just stared at him. Um, she said she didn't know him. And then, call it a resurrection. Alive. Police have another surprise for Dahlia DiPolito. Come here, please. Come here. Mike, come here. She sees come here, her husband, please. and he's live. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The show Cops captures this moment as well. Come here, please. Come here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why not? I didn't do anything to you. Mike, come here, please. Done You're alive? Nobody. I love that moment, and I'm sure a jury will too. You're going to jail today for solicitation of murder. You're under arrest. I didn't do anything. Did you hear what I just told you? You kept saying, I didn't do anything. Please, I didn't do anything. 
Was that all you could think of to say? They were accusing me of trying to have my husband killed, and I, I didn't. She's pretty. She's petite. She's agreeable. She's nice. She ain't never done nothing to nobody. She's just a little angel floating around, shitting rainbows, unicorns, and butterflies. That's all she do. She ain't never tried to hurt nobody. She innocent. She innocent. She's got all the right characteristics. She ain't never done nothing to nobody. <laughs> oh my goodness. And continues the lie. And she did for over six years until she was sentenced to 20 years in jail. I want you to hear what the judge said uh, to this lady. I don't know about your Linda behaviors before you met Mr. What DeVito, he says is but, profound. Uh, I think it's uh, folly to suggest that you somehow uh, were pure of heart uh, on the day that you met Mr. DiPolito uh, back on October 2008, and then somehow being exposed to him for two months caused you to uh, plunge into some sort of moral decay that caused you to become uh, a would-be murderess. Uh, I just don't buy that. I don't buy that. I think that was uh, notwithstanding everything your mom and your family tried to give you, uh, that was who you became, who you were. And, uh, and it manifested itself in these, these horrible acts. You met and married a man, and shortly after the honeymoon, uh, you, you set about trying to get him uh, arrested and thrown in jail for a violation of probation, trumping up charges, planting drugs on his car, uh, having others call uh, the police, uh, trying to get his parole, uh, pro probation officer involved in it. Um, in Do you see how she was getting flying monkeys? going against her husband, only being married to him for less than three months? And you tell me that these people aren't predacidic and know what they're doing? You see the, the fluidity of narcissistic tactics, manipulation, and behavior. She was surrounding the wagons with her flying monkeys. They do this from day one. That's why you're devastated and you have no place to rest your head after you've been in a relationship with one of these monsters. In this is textbook narcissism. You, you began this she relentless campaign to get rid of your husband. Nobody. First you thinking, well, I'll just get him sent off to prison and that would be good enough. Uh, you use guile and sophistry to dupe others into your web of deception. Uh, you were the puppet master that was pulling all the strings. You weren't acting at the direction of somebody else. You weren't under the influence of somebody else. Uh, you were the one calling the shots. And you were engaged in a course of conduct not over some momentary lapse of good judgment. This wasn't like, ah, I ran a red light, I shouldn't have done that. Or, ah, oh, what was I thinking? I had the gun in my hand and, and I shot it because I was angry. It was weeks and months that you continued with these different schemes to try to rid yourself of your husband that was just something out of a novel. And it was, it, it was um, you know, uh, horrible to watch it unfold as, as, the, as the trial testimony came out. It was pure evil. Um, watch it unfold as, as, the, as the trial testimony came out. It was pure evil. You see how the judge wasn't afraid to call it like it is, like it was, because he's a man. You could tell he's a masculine man. You see, psychology has been so feminized and so watered down and turned into fluff that it's mutated into something that's almost irrelevant with all of these different categories. The only people that you need to be worried about are evil people that are parasitic. You can break down every personality you want, but there's only one that will intentionally try to destroy you 
and is full of dark energy. And that's what we call narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths, etc. What their personality types are doesn't matter and are completely irrelevant. I hope you got that through today's show. That's the number one takeaway is stop thinking that there's a certain criteria of the way a personality is that's going to tell you if a person is a narcissist or not. It's what they do. It's their behavior. It's insidious. That's why you have to study a person like a narcissist studies you. Oh, well, we shouldn't have to do that. Well, we do. If you want to set good boundaries and live a healthy life, and you also have to be careful of who you're letting in your head. Evil is evil, period. Watch out for the intellectual clutter. Watch out for the dark energy of intellectual narcissists. They are tricky, tricky, tricky. All right, you guys. I appreciate you guys stopping by today. I got nothing but love for you. If you found some value and enjoyed today's episode, please give a thumbs up and subscribe if you like the journey. <laughs> and share these videos with family members and others. It's important to get this message out. And what say you? Have you experienced this kind of behavior from another narcissist? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Enlighten the path for me. I don't know everything and my mind is open. But most of all, you guys, be good to each other. Take care of one another as sentient human beings. And stand up! Don't be a doormat for anybody. You have a right to be who you are and to be safe and mentally sound. No one has a right to play with your life. Do not allow them to do so. Do whatever it takes to go up, over, around, or through a narcissist. Take good care of yourself. And the best way to do this is no contact if possible. And if you got to stay in contact with them, ignore them. What they say and do is 1,000% irrelevant. All right, you guys? And keep pushing, all right? You will get through this. Don't you dare give up on yourself. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Until then, peace. Be well. No tears, no fears. Fully alive again after these years.